um, who is part of the first class of female astronaut candidates to come into the program. You meet me in episode three only. So you have to wait, you know, it's got to be patient. Uh, and uh, yeah, so she is a deeply ambitious, <laughs> deeply brilliant young woman who is, hails from New York actually, but grew up in an aviation family was flying by the time she was 16 or 17, her father was a pilot, she had access to planes growing up, so uh, this is a very familiar world to her, of course not within the framework of NASA, but um, she's very practiced and very experienced with flight, and uh, an aeronautical engineer, so when the call comes for female astronauts, it's it uh, feels deeply obvious to her that that should be the next step. And, joins the ranks and then we get so that and to talk to the journey the journey becomes uh, the candidacy of the astronaut candidacy and the will they won't they of who becomes an astronaut um, and I stick around so I think it's fairly obvious that there's some positive results there for her um, and then it really becomes about uh, my personal life and my private life and that I have been forbidden to share more about I think in some ways she's a little parallel to um, Jodie's character. She's also deeply ambitious, she's also brilliant. Um, she's also struggling at a time when women were supposed to be seen and not heard. In many ways, like most women that worked at NASA at that time were secretaries, not necessarily engineers or flight controllers. Um, and I think Margot. Margot's unique in that she often is probably the most talented and smart person in the room. And she's also terrible at staying in, in her lane. She thinks kind of like the political niceties of, you know, like, I don't know, being chummy. She thinks all of that's kind of like a waste of time. So I think she oftentimes is her own worst enemy. Um, and she also is like, She's so, so, so ready to be given a shot um, in mission control when we first meet her. She's in the back of the room. And I think she both knows deep in her heart and a lot of other people know that she deserves a spot in that room. She's just not necessarily going to be given the opportunity. Um, so she's really fighting for that. Uh, she's also the protege of Werner von Braun, who's kind of like the father of um, the rocketry program that takes the Americans to the moon. Um, so I think that's another thing that's both like helping her and hurting her in a way because she's seen as his protege. She doesn't want to get ahead because of that, um, but also she probably wouldn't be at NASA if it wasn't for him. So that's kind of where you meet her. Um, and then she's knocking on that door, <laughs> uh, and she's got like a really interesting like personal storyline as well. Um, but that's also. <laughs> what made you want to be a part of this show? Was it being able to be in space or um, good writing? Yeah. It's really yeah. good writing. Great writing, great challenge a great challenge to play. You know, the idea of believably playing an astronaut, playing someone who works in mission control, it's such a the demands a certain amount of you. Um, and for me anyway, that's always really enticing. The research that that involves, the knowledge acquisition that that involves. Um, yeah. Cool costumes. Cool costumes. Yeah. <laughs> You have to go through extensive research because Jessica Chastain, when she was away from Martian, she was like, maybe she would want to wear a necklace, but yeah. she was choked by a necklace in space. So they didn't go up. Right. Did you go to the sun, similar to find out something called the space life. Um, yeah, totally. In terms of character decisions like that, it's all about just like infusing from what the writers have given us to making those kinds of really personal choices. For sure. Always, always happen. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.